Okay, hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about two things that I've had a real difficult time put together. I'm talking about two systems that are really, really useful. The caged system and the three note per string system. And they're kind of difficult to, to blend together because one favors the shreddy licks, the faster stuff, but doesn't necessarily um, help players understand intervals and target the right notes. Whereas the other system, the cage system, is great for sounding melodic and highlighting tones of the, the chords, but they're not as flashy. Today we're going to bring both worlds together in a super fun, hopefully, and interactive way, and that's coming up. Hi, my name is David Wallman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping the top players like us, we're all in the same boat, find our voice, and if we found it, develop it to tell our own musical story. We all have something unique to share with our own experiences, where we came from, and, and all our stories can be brought into this beautiful language, which is music. And today, we are looking at different concepts that are gonna hopefully help you blend two different trained, uh, trained thoughts that are very important in music and eventually you need to know both, but it's kind of hard to blend both together. So first of all, what are those two different um, ways of thinking that I'm talking about? Well, the caged system, which we're gonna talk about in a second, and the three note per string system, which we're also gonna talk about right now. Let me start with the three note per string system. This is the system that I actually started with when I was playing three note per string, there are three notes per string. So if we're in A Aeolian, or those are three notes, three notes, three notes, three notes, three notes, and three notes. So that's the system. And usually that creates uh, wider scales. We're starting from one area of the fretboard, and because we are playing uh, one note at a time, we're not repeating notes, we're gonna end a little bit higher because there are three notes per strings, a little bit wider. And that favors um, sequences, like all the shreddy stuff, because we have the same amount of notes on each string, which is great for sequences, for this kind of, this kind of playing. All that kind of thing, the legato is really great for that. And so forth, and that's great. That has its its place. But um, I found that when when starting with this system, my phrasing would tend to be very mechanical and very technique orientated, and I wasn't really close to what I was saying. The music that I was playing was very influenced by the shapes that I knew. Um, a demonstration of that would be over this uh, this loop here in A minor seven, and uh, I'm going to play something in A Dorian with a three note per string system. That kind of thing. It sounds okay, but if you only do that, it might not really um, be as expressive as you want it to be. Whereas the caged system um, is a lot more expressive. First, what is the caged system? Caged, C-A-G-E-D. Those are the, the chords that we're gonna use to extract from them different characteristics. So when I say chords, I'm talking about the open chords, the one that you, you start learning, the, the open C chord, the open A, G, you know, all those cowboy chords. Well, those chords have characteristics. If we look at the C chord, the characteristic of the C chord is that it has the root on the fifth string and the chord is built on the left side of that root. So that means that any musical concept, whether it's a chord, a scale, a lick, whatever it is, as long as it fits those characteristics, root on the fifth string, uh, chord or ele musical element happening 
on the left side from your perspective, that'll be the C shape. So if we have an idea like uh, this, it doesn't even have to be a major chord, but let's say that we have um, this chord right here, which is an E minor seven chord. The root is on the fifth string. And the chord happens on the left side. So even if this chord is an E minor seven, it is using the C shape of the caged system. And it's in that narrower area of the fretboard. So that's what the caged system is. And the idea is that you can um, tie any musical element to one of these five chord shapes, the characteristics. Where's the root? Which direction is the musical element built according to that root? And that kind of playing, if you use the caged system, it favors you know, choice of notes, you're highlighting notes of the chords, and it's very melodic usually, arpeggio orientated, maybe not as shreddy as you, you might want it to be, but it's, it's a great system, I love it. Pentatonic scales, you know, those uh, r traditional pentatonic positions, those are kind of narrow positions and they fit the caged system. As a matter of fact, there are five positions of the minor pentatonic scale. Each of these five positions fits one of these C, A, G, E, D positions. Anyways, I'm going to refer you to uh, the full lesson on cage system in the description of this video if this was unclear. Just keep in mind that those two systems are awesome to memorize the fretboard, but they should be complementary, but it's hard sometimes to join them together. If I played uh, caged over this um, same loop, it'll be more focused. It's very narrow. Very melodic too. Whereas the three note per string. Okay, it's, um, it's a little, little faster. Okay, there's one thing about the three note per string system that is um, maybe not as friendly. To, to play over chords, and that's the actual shape, where it's a very um, wide shape, right? The cage system is a narrow shape, that's how you wanna think about it. Uh, narrow shape for the caged and wider for the three note per string. And if you're in the three note per string system in A Dorian, you're starting on the root here, you're going through all the different notes, and um, you're starting with the root right here, that's easy to see, low E string, fifth fret, and you keep going, and so you've got root, second, minor third, fourth, fifth, major sixth, minor seventh, root, major second, and you continue like that. And then you, you go in a different zone of the fretboard, and sometimes it's kind of difficult to, to know that this note right here is the root again, because you're so far from the original um, starting point. And that's the difficulty, really, of the, the three note per string system. That's what I kind of dislike with that system. How can we blend both together? Well, with a cage system, because everything is narrow and, and kind of follows a chord shape, uh, that's why it's easy to, to pinpoint intervals. If I'm in that area of the fretboard here, A Dorian, and I wanna and I land on the ninth, for example, I'm in that zone of the fretboard, the ninth is within that. I don't have to go all the way up, you know, to, to find, that the ninth is you know, really far away from that chord shape. So here's what I suggest. Why not take the narrowness <laughs> of the cage system and still use three note per strings? We can do that. If we look at the Dorian mode here, um, and we build it around the E shape of the cage system. E because it fits the characteristics of an open E chord, which is you know, root on the low E string, chord happens on the right side, so the E shape of A Dorian would be root on the low E string. Chord happens on the right side. That zone of the fretboard, you know, all the pentatonic stuff. First position. Well, let's build a th start building a three note per string and the rule is to stay as, um, to stay in that shape kind of. You don't go outside of that shape. So we can start with root, second, minor, third. That would fit the shape. On the next string, we're gonna have root, um, fifth, and we still want three notes per string, so we're gonna, we're gonna stretch here to reach that major sixth. 
So far, it's exactly like the three note per string. On the next string, we'll also have frets five, seven, nine, which is minor seventh, root, major second. Then we'll have minor third, fourth, fifth. So far, it's exactly like the three note per string system, but this is where we're going to change. Instead of playing our uh, major sixth right here, minor seventh, root, that's really outside of that original zone. We're going to stay within, and so we're going to repeat that fifth on the second string, fifth fret. Major sixth, minor seventh, root, major second, and minor third. So now instead of having this, we're outside of the zone, we have something like this. Notice this? Same pitches. But we don't care about that. Because now we, we were able to, to fit our three note per string position within that, you know, um, kind of narrowness of the E shape. We can still visualize our chord pretty easily, but we have all the cool stuff that you can do with the um, three note per string system, which is all the shreddy stuff. So now um, I can easily transition from the faster playing to the narrow position, to the more thoughtful um, playing where I can target those interval notes. So that's what I, what I want to suggest today. And you can do that with any mode, really. So you're trying to, to limit yourself to one area of the fretboard here. There are um, a lot of different ways to approach this, but really the important thing is to be able to, to mentally visualize and be aware of where those intervals are. And I feel that usually narrower positions really favor that um, knowledge of where the intervals are because they just follow the chord, the chord shape. We have an A minor chord shape here. It's easy to know that, okay, I've got my minor seven here, that's within the chord. A major six would be one fret lower. I'm just kind of painting over the chord here. And that's why a lot of players love the pentatonic stuff because it, it fits that chord. Whereas the three note per string just kind of, you know, you're, you're going from one position, one area of the fretboard to another one, which is possible to do, but I really suggest that you view it like that. Plus that repetition of note here, or right here, is kind of cool. If you have a sequence like this, for example, where you're doing, um, Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's kind of cool to have that repetition of note here. Okay, I'm gonna play a little bit over this vamp here which I'm going to tell you about in a, in a second. This is an A minor 7 vamp, just part of a pack on guitarplayback.com called the One Chord Backing Track Pack, collection of different one chord backing tracks for you to work on those, those things. And I'm going to try to transition. I'm going to start with the pure cage system, so it's going to be maybe slower playing, more focused, more melodic. Then I'm going to go to the traditional three note per string, which starts in one of the fretboard and finishes in another one. And you'll see that the difficulty to go back to the, the, the cage system or melodic playing. And then I will um, I'll play that new three note per string caged position. And you'll see that it's really easier to transition your, your thought process from one um, system to the next. But I'll, I'll coach you through it. All right, here we go. I'm going to start with uh, the cage system. So more melodic, thoughtful, narrow position. I'm going to think about the notes before I play them. It's very focused. More melodic. I know exactly what I'm going to hit before I hit it. When I say I know, I know the sound. Transition to that three note per string. It's 
See, I'm outside of that zone now, and that's... I really have to use a lot of brain power to, to think about what is this note? That's a fifth. It's a little bit harder, and then to transition back, it's even harder. So I'm gonna start with a three note per string traditional, try to go back to more melodic. It's not as smooth as I want it to be. Now I'm gonna start with a caged. Okay, very melodic, very focused. Now the new system. Even though I have the three note per string thing, It's easier to transition back to the more focused playing. Great. A lot of fun to blend those worlds together and this really helped me transition from a smoother playing and be more uh, in control of my music instead of letting my fingers just fly through those three note per strings. It was very mechanical, not as personal. I think this will help you. Um, if you want to go further with this, I prepared a free downloadable pack that goes with this lesson. That's what I usually do, as you know by now. This pack has um, uh, three backing tracks in it, just like I was playing here. You have an A minor seven chord backing track, an A major seven chord backing track, and an A dominant seven chord backing track, which will help you practice those modes. And there's some charts also with the new, I guess we'd call it three note per string caged system, maybe. <laughs> um, and um, I prepared for you the, that chart with um, you know the different positions. Uh, you got some Ionian, Lydian for the major seven stuff, Aeolian, Dorian for the minor seven stuff, and Mixolydian for the dominant seven stuff. And of course, you can expand that to any musical concept you're using. You should do it right now. To get this pack, you just visit the link below, enter your best email address, and um, I'll be sending you that pack right away. And uh, this was your first visit. Thank you so much for checking out this channel. You should subscribe because every week I have three videos coming out. It's like this one, helping the top players like us find our voice on the instrument, develop it, and tell our own musical story. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this. Let me know if you have any questions below. Like this video, it does really help. Or dislike it, that's fine too. It helps as much as the, help, the, the likes. Thank you. Remember, nobody can play the way you play on the instrument. It's all about developing that. I'll see you next time.